Today we will be talking about React.js, this JavaScript library for building user interfaces. And this topic, React.js, is quite popular here on YouTube. So there will be a little twist in this video. I will be trying to show you how to make the project setup for React.js a little bit more modern and a little bit more lightweight. So we'll be using new tools and our goal is to make the experience of developing React.js applications simpler, easier and better. We'll be using functions to build the structure of our application. We'll be using hooks, of course, and we'll be also using ECMAScript modules. So React.js doesn't support ECMAScript modules yet. We will do some tricks, some hacks to achieve that. At the same time, we'll be trying to keep the number of dependencies as small as possible. So when you are generating an app using the Create React App Generator, there is a lot in your Node modules. Well, the approach I'm about to show you will result in a very small amount of dependencies. So your application will be smaller and easier to manage. Our goal is to create a, an application that interacts with a GraphQL endpoint. So we will be using GitHub API and we'll be trying to list repositories for a specific user. Just a very simple task. And I'll be introducing different tools that will make the whole experience either simpler or uh, better. So the first tool we are going to use is called PNPM, which is an alternative to NPM. It's a package manager to, for JavaScript projects. There are two things that are interesting about this particular project. The first one, it's much faster than NPM and Yarn. So you can go to the website and check the, uh, the benchmarks. They are doing extensive benchmarks in, in different, different scenarios. And the second reason I like PNPM instead of Yarn or NPM is that it's disk efficient. So in Unix, there is this idea of a hard link, which is that if you have a file on your disk and this file is used in different places, you are storing the data in one place and in every place where you need the data, you're using the references. So this is much more efficient than just, you know, copying the same dependencies over and over for each new project. And PNPM uses the same idea. It fetches each dependency, each, uh, each library or each package, whatever you call it, once, and it keeps this in a single central repository. And then when you use it in different projects, it just references that data. So it's, it's using some tricks to do that. So each project thinks that it has these, those packages in node modules, while in fact they are stored in a single place. So this way you are not, you are using much uh, less space uh, compared to NPM on Yarn. So these are the two tricks I really like about PNPM. So first we need to install that. So you have to do NPM to install PNPM, which is kind of funny. And we are going to install it globally. So I already did that. And once you do it, you will have access to two commands. The first one is pnpm, of course, and the second one is pnpx, which is the a tool for executing uh, scripts similar to npx. So now we can generate our project, but we will be using, so in order to generate the project, we'll be using another new tool, which is called Vite. And this tool was created for Vue.js, but it's, it's also compatible with React and Preact. And this is a dev build tool, which has this trick that it uses native ECMAScript modules. And whenever you are accessing something, it compiles those dependencies on the fly in development. And then for the uh, production, it uses rollup just to bundle everything. So compared to something like Webpack and uh, or Rollup for development, it's uh, much faster. 
because it uses this another tool behind the scenes called ESBuild. And this tool is almost 100 to 100 uh, to even to 300 times uh, faster than Webpack or Parcel or 100 faster than Rollup and, and Tercer. So it's extremely fast to um, parse the dependencies, to, to bundle the dependencies and to compile them or transpile them. So let's use the wide app generator, but instead of using npm, we'll be using pnpm. Let's call our app gh explorer, github explorer. And we also need to provide the template because by default, Vite generates the structure for Vue.js applications. So we need to use template uh, React in our case, something like that. So it generates the structure for the app. And now we need to go inside the directory. And instead of running any of those commands, we need to do pnpm install or just i. So it's shorter. So now, as you can see, pnpm reuses most of the dependencies I had in my central repository instead of downloading them. And it just downloaded one. So now we can do pnpm dev to start this project. And it listens on the port 3000. So that's the very simple um, React JS application using Vite. And you know, we have this basic counter, of course, and we can uh, update this app on the fly because it has this hot reloading feature. So now I will stop this and I will open that in VS Code. And I will start the, say, the server from within VS Code. Let's see if it works still. It works. So now we can, uh, you know, go to this file and we can, let's remove the logo, the description. If I save, it's automatically updated on the fly. So now let's try to interact with a GraphQL endpoint. And in order to do that, we will use this project called OneGraph. So our goal here is to interact with GitHub API. So GitHub provides a GraphQL endpoint. But instead of using GitHub directly, I will be using OneGraph. And the reason is that OneGraph is this catalog of APIs. So you have different APIs and you have always the same way of accessing that. So if you, you've done some interactions, some integrations of GraphQL APIs, you probably know that every you know, vendor or every API has some different rules and you have to learn about those rules. It's uh, especially visible for authentication and then you need to implement it. So it takes time. With something like one graph, you have always one way of doing things. So it's the, it's unified, you know, it's faster. Simply put, one graph allows us to make everything faster. And it's very easy to use. So I can just register. I will be using GitHub to sign in. And then I need to create an app. And I have the app ID and the endpoint I should use. Um, one graph has this data explorer. As you can see, it provides integrations for many APIs out of the box. So we have Airtable, the box, Cloudflare, Dev2, Dribble, you know, Dropbox, Netlify, uh, NPM, etc. And now we can use this data explorer to create our query. So our idea is to use GitHub. So let me just find it. Where is the GitHub? Yeah. And we want to list the repositories of a specific user. So we will go here to user. I will type the handle. So in this case is my, my uh, username. And I want to, I want to see the repositories, my repositories like that. So, you know, just by clicking, I'm generating the query on the fly. And now I only want the projects that are public and I don't want to have uh, forks and I want to order them by number of stars. And then I want to display the ID and the name of the project. Where is it? Name. 
and then I want to display the number of stars. So I need to go to Stargazers and Total Count. Just by clicking here in the Explorer, I generated this query and I can run it. And it says that it's missing out for GitHub and it displays this button so I can log in to authenticate this application and it's done. And now I can run it again and it displays my projects ordered by the number of stars. So we have the query ready and now we can just copy that and integrate that in our app so we display that in our React uh, JS application. So in order to do that, we will be using this project called URQL, which is a very lightweight client for GraphQL. And it works with React.js, Preact and Svelte, I believe. So we need to first install it. And because we are using PNPM, we will be doing PNPM add. And we are adding the URQL along with GraphQL. And now let's create a component. Let's call it repository list like that. And, and there is this hook called use query and URQL. So we'll be using that. We need to copy the, uh, the query and let's assign this to um, just the, to a variable like that. Let's do something like that. And now just to see if it works, let's integrate that in our application. So I will just import repository list here. Let me start the server. Let's refresh and it works. We have the, the component in our view. So let's create, let's use the use query. And we need to pass it the query, this one. So instead of writing query, query, I can just write this. And this is of course hook, so I need to use uh, array here. And now I can destructure it. So it returns data, the fetching status and error, if there, if there is one. So if it's fetching, I will just return a div. If it's error, I will return error. And otherwise we will have the data. So the data will be uh, this list over here. So in order to access it, we need to go to GitHub user repositories nodes. So let's do that. Uh, repos data GitHub uh, user repositories and, uh, and nodes. And this is an array. So now I can instead of returning a div, I can just return, let's do um, ul and we will do our repos and we'll be mapping, will be repository and here we will do le and for starters let's display just a name like that and we may need to specify the key as well so let's say id. Okay. So now it won't work because we need to plug in, we need to connect with the endpoint with one graph. So we need to do this in the main. So here we need two things. The first thing is that we need to use the create client function and the provider. We need to create a client using the create uh, client function and it takes the URL, the URL of our endpoint. So we need to go back to our one graph and this is the URL. But because this is uh, one graph, it requires some authentication headers to be passed as well. So we need to adjust it. And in order to do that, we need, um, we need to install one graph out package. And now we can just import that package from one graph out, something like that. 
and we need to pass the app ID. So app ID is this number over here, which is also the part of the URL. So we can just make something like that. And here we can just uh, and this must be um, of course an object. And now using something called fetch options, we can specify the out. I'm sorry, it's uh, headers with uh, headers that we are taking from this one graph client like that. So the idea here is that we are passing, we are taking the required headers from the client, one graph client, and we are passing it with each request, with each GraphQL request in headers. And you need to all, you need to do this only once. It's very simple. And then we need to use the provider component so that we our application uses this uh, client. So like that. We need to wrap the app like that. And that's all. So now it would be good to okay here we have an error. The final step is to use one graph to log in on our behalf to GitHub. So we'll be doing that in app. So here I will um, distinguish two scenarios. So I will create uh, is logged in state using use state and by default we are not logged in. And here we'll be checking if we, if we are logged in. So if we are logged in, display the list of repositories. Otherwise, display a button to log in. So we'll be uh, login on click and we'll be invoking this function called login which doesn't exist yet. So we need to create the function and here we need the um, the out instance. So we will just export it here so that we can import it here. So I can now do uh, out from uh, main. And using this out, I can do await login. And I, I must select the name of the, uh, the API we want to log in. So in our case, it's GitHub. And because I'm using await, I need to make this function async, of course. And then we can check if we are logged in. And depending on that, we will use the, the setter to set the state like that. And that should be it. Start the server. I have the login button. If I log in, I'm redirected to the, um, our application we created. So it doesn't work because there's no function out headers. Okay, so I made a mistake. This is out headers. And voila, it works uh, as expected. So that's all. We created a React.js application. It has a minimal set of dependencies. It uses ECMAScript modules. It uses ESBuild and compiles the assets on the fly in development. It's very fast. Uh, we are using URQL to interact with GraphQL. And then we are using OneGraph, this uh, gateway or a catalog of APIs so that we have this unified experience when, in when integrating different GraphQL APIs. So it was, um, I think, relatively straightforward to build this app. As a result, our application is lightweight and modern. And I hope you will use some of those techniques in your own applications. That's all. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.